Okay, good evening to the January Recreation Commission meeting. This meeting will be replayed via Xfinity Channel 8 or High Definition Channel 1072. It may be also accessed via the Government Access Channel Live Video On Demand Archives, which can be found on the Town of Barnstable's website. I will start off with a roll call. Um, starting off with Tim Luce. Here. Brendan Burke. Here. Sharon Brown. Here. And Tony LaPola. Here. Thank you. I will then ask for a um, act to approve the minutes from our December meeting. Approved. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Brendan Burke seconds. Thank you. Thank you all in favor. We'll ask for just a, a unanimous vote. Everyone in favor of the December minutes being approved? Yes. 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 And I, I think, Sandra, that's okay because we can all be seen on the video. It's sometimes when we don't have um, people on camera that we have to go through a roll call where your yeah. name is spoken. Sounds good. Okay, I have some great um, old business, a task that I want to thank each of you for completing your conflict of interest training and for signing your certificate for the open uh, law meetings. Are there any questions about any of that content? No. Very good. Thank you so much. And I think the the rule of thumb with the um, conflict of interest um, training, you know, when in doubt, the most important thing is to act beforehand. And there are so many resources that can help each of us navigate whether that is or isn't a, a conflict. So to be proactive versus reactive and that we are considered uh, town employees, even though we have um, a, an appointed role for the town. So those are two highlights. I will then move to our first order of new business. It is time for us to elect the chair and vice chair for the calendar year 2024. And I'd like to see if there are any nominations for the chair. Excuse me, Renee, it, nominations were last month, right? So now yeah. it's just a matter of voting? Yes. So the nominee, it, so what, what was done in the other meetings, we kind of figured out who is. So I don't know if we should say the name and then do it formally so we know, because there were just two people. And I would just make sure that no one else is interested in the chair position. If not, being said, the nomination is for um, myself, Renee King, to continue in the role of the chair. Um, and are there any discussions, questions? So I will ask for a vote in favor of that chair appointment. And this time I will go by name. So I'll start off with uh, Tony. Uh, yes, I approve that. Um, Sharon? In favor. Thank you. Brendan? Brendan Burke's in favor. Tim? Tim Luce in favor. And Renee supports it. And we do have a forum with that. So thank you, everyone. I'd like to move on to the vice chair um, position. And then that is with Sharon Brown taking on that role. Um, any questions? All righty, I'd like to go down the list in favor of Sharon Brown as our vice chair. So I'll start with Tony. In favor. Um, I will then go with Brendan. Brendan Burke's in favor. Um, Tim Luce. Tim Luce in favor. And Sharon. Oh, Renee, in favor. And then Sharon. In favor. Uh, <laughs> So we now have on record, uh, Sandra, we have our 2024 um, chair, Renee King, and vice chair 
um, Sharon Brown. I did also, um, I'd like to move this topic for February and that is the assignment of the CPC mm -hmm. um, chair. And we have two individuals that are interested in um, doing that. And what I did find out, what is possible is to have that role shared. So that gives each of the individuals the opportunity to have some leeway. And that would be Sharon and Alisa. But what I need is that to be approved by the Recreation Commission. So I'll make a motion that um, given the schedules that a co-chair position for the CPC seat by the Recreation Commission um, be implemented in 2024. Anyone want to second that? I'll second that. And what do we have for discussion? Any discussion? My only question would be, how would it be split? Like every other or? I would, what I would ask Sharon is I would, I would ask the two of you to work it out because I think that um, uh, Elisa has some commitments and so you you both work it out and see what works and you know in the case of an emergency maybe the other can support but you guys work that out and then um, depending on what meeting you attend will be who will report. And I, I I would also say that you know maybe the first couple of meetings you both go because it is a pretty important role. It is um, probably the most um, uh, comprehensive um, role in terms of um, depending on how much money there is that's going to be spent. Um, I sat in that role for about six months. So it, it's it's nice to have a, a co-chair to, to work with. And we have a great track record um, in that the Recreation Commission has gotten most of the things that we have asked for. Okay. Um, we do have, um, I'm currently sitting in the, uh, on the board of Sandy Neck, and I have talked to a, a few folks that um, maybe will help that um, position. It is on the same night. Um, it's whenever there is a Monday um, holiday, they're on the same night. So it's the second Monday of the month. And at this point, they would prefer that only one person take that role. And that is an in-person meeting. Okay. So hey, Renee, I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you need to vote on that to implement the, uh, since you made a motion and sharing? Yes. So, so we now are ready. Thank you, Sandra, to Can make I? that, that vote. Any other discussion on? I do have I don't know if Go someone ahead. I heard anybody, but I do have one. Are both parties okay with splitting this position? Um, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and we can I both just, attend I, the meeting, right? It yes. was just only one will report. Yes. Yes, that's what I was told. Um, so thank you, Brendan. That's a really good um position. And what I would say, I would what I will do here is before we vote. Let's put that off to February because I would have liked Alicia to also be here. And I think that that's the, the right thing to do. She asked, and but she's not here. And I want to make sure that that's the same, um, that she's okay with it. I will let you know. I already know I will not be at the February meeting. I'm guessing it's the first Monday, and I will be in Jamaica. <laughs> so All the travel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I, I do, I just think that it's really good with something like this for both parties to be here. I would forfeit the February meeting for that. I mean, we're not gonna miss a whole lot and we get started in, in March. Okay. okay. So Brennan, thank you for that. Um, Sandra, I'll withdraw the motion for this, this meeting and put that on the February meeting. And you can okay. please note, obviously I won't be there to vote, so. Yeah. Uh, how you know how I feel well I'm fine with it so okay yeah. yeah I think that that's important and then maybe Sharon you myself and Alicia can have a small conversation and be ready for that in 
February. Thank you, Brandon. You are good. Listener. Oh my goodness, I love that. Okay, so um, I think we're ready to move right into the first staff report, and that would be um, John Gleason, our recreation staff report. All right, thanks, Renee. I'm going to share my screen. Hold on a second. I think everyone should be able to see my screen, correct? Yes, correct. Yes. So, uh, Renee uh, talked to Mark and I a while ago, but uh, most recently, recently uh, to kind of change up the way we present, especially, you know, online. You know, it's nice to hear about all the things that we're doing, but as, you know, the expression goes, you know, a picture says a thousand words. So, you know, as I'm giving my, you know, monthly report, you know, I'll put up some images so you can see, you know, our programs and our kids smiling and having a great time. Um, so I'll just leave, leave this up as I present. Um, anyway, in the month of uh, December, towards the end, the town manager did approve uh, the fee increase for our summer leisure program. So the program's going up to $1,400 for the summer, which equates to $5 an hour. Um, we do have financial aid available. We do have grant money available. And um, you know there is another organization I heard about recently that does also provide financial assistance to kids in need or families in need. Um, so no matter what, uh, we always wanna make sure a kid can participate. Um, but the costs for the program have gone up and we need to increase our fee and that was approved. Uh, usually during the December time, I seek out uh, bids for like lifeguard uniforms, t-shirts, JFK Memorial hats to make sure when we go to order those uh, for the next go around, I have updated prices. So we know what we're spending on those. So those are due back to me from vendors on beginning of February. So I should uh, know those prices um, pretty early in February. So I know what we're dealing with for the rest of the year or for the new fiscal year. Um, during the winter months, also prepared the annual uh, budget narrative for the town manager that was submitted into our community service director, Chris Ganella. Um, and that is off to to uh, town hall for them to review and uh, create that budget book. Um, the beginning of the end of fall marks our end of where we keep track of our uh, CSRs from our participants and our parents. And proud to report our staff received a 9.8 out of 10 for all their programs. So that usually starts in the winter time, goes into spring, summer, fall. We collect all the numbers of participants, what our score was, uh, percentage of you know things turned back to us, and and that was our final score. So really proud of of our program staff and assistant director for doing a great job. Um, Nine point eight out of ten is is remarkable. Um, last but not least, for our administrative portion, that towards the middle of the month, uh, Sandra and myself were honored for our years of service. So Sandra has been working with the Recreation Division for five years, and I completed 20 years of service with the town. So it was nice to uh, be honored by the town. Um, Sandra and I uh, had a great time at that event. Um, aquatics wise, uh, like I reported last time, we are selling the 2024 parking permits for the season. Uh, they're on sale online or through the mail. Again, I would, uh, uh, request that anyone out there listening or seeing this that they uh, jump on getting their parking permit now and, and uh, wait for it during the cold winter instead of uh, when it's really hot out and they want to go to the beach and uh, they have to wait for it then. Uh, currently we're processing January 2nd so we're you know five no it's six six days behind which is uh, pretty good at this point point. Um, and as the uh, season goes along we'd like to stay you know, a week or two turnaround. Um, that's why we want people to do it now so they don't wait in, you know, um, May or June to get this. They could get it now. Um, so anyone out there online or through the mail would be great. Um, I've requested George Noonan, our assistant director, to secure our mooring permits for the 2024 season. So that's for our boats and sailboats for our sailing program. 
Uh, we need to renew those every year. So we'll be working on that this uh, this month to make sure that we're all set to go and not waiting ourselves for the last minute to make sure we're secure for that. Uh, we've scheduled lifeguard tryouts for April 27th, May 11th, and June 1st. So anyone out there that has uh, an interest in becoming a lifeguard, they can reach out to us and we can give them all the information available. And we'll have our applications available February 1st for people to apply for any of our summer positions. Um, anything out there is on the town website now. The summer positions will be available February 1st. Um, recreation programs, uh, every year we, or every school vacation, we hold the vacation program. We had 15 kids in the program. So while parents are working during school vacation, we provide an, out, an outlet for those families. Uh, they go bowling, they go to the movies, they do arts and crafts. Um, if it's nice out, they go outside, go to playgrounds. Um, we have a, they have a good time during that week. Um, our basketball, our K through three boys and girls basketball program has uh, started. They've had, I think now four weeks at this point. And on the girls side, our girls high school basketball team has volunteered to assist with the program. So every every week, a couple different girls from the basketball high school team will come and volunteer their time uh, to assist the young girls to learn how to play basketball. And that's been going very well. Um, we formed our teams for our fourth and fifth grade boys and girls program. Uh, Kelly Crowley and Jack Kapanke Kip are in charge of those programs. They have a schedule, they have rosters, and I believe they started their first games last week and those went well. So it's good to see that the, they're practicing during the month of December has led into some games starting now in January. Um, during COVID, we had to find new ways to do some of our special events, and we created a, you know, at home build your gingerbread house and send us pictures, and we would display them on our Facebook page and Instagram. Well, you know, we, we were able to take that kind of concept and bring it to life in person. So we had 10 participants enroll uh, into the program where they came to the Heinz Youth and Community Center and built gingerbread houses here. There's a picture uh, in the upper right-hand corner of, of that. The kids had a great time with Kelly and Jackie Keeney, another one of our program coordinators doing that. Um, and then last but not least, um, you know, we've done this the past couple of years is a holiday light social media contest. So we asked people to kind of highlight their homes and what they're doing with their lights um, to kind of show off uh, the cool things that people are doing in the community and we would give them a prize uh, if they posted a picture. We I think we selected a couple winners from that. Um, so that was the month of December. Um, you know, we had some pictures of our holiday ornament making class, a half day of play where we go on adventures with kids on school half days, um, a picture of the Toys for Tots where we were collecting, um, you know, toys for the community. Um, you know, December was a, was a great month. Um, if anyone has a que any questions, be glad to um, glad to answer those questions. So, John, first, I'd like to uh, congratulate you for twenty years of service, and Sandra, five years of service. Great, um, awesome milestones, and then kudos to the entire team. A nine point eight uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, rate is uh, quite um, amazing. And look who's joined us. Hi, Jim. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, Renee, very, very proud of our staff. Last year, we were at 9.7. So it was nice to see uh, that little increase. Um, you know, the staff, uh, Mickey Davies, uh, Jack, Jackie Kelly, and George Noonan uh, oversees our program coordinators. So they do an excellent job. They work really hard for the community, for the kids, and pr proud of proud of the 9.8. Any other questions for John? John, I have one more question. It's uh, one of my favorite topics, the lifeguard class at the high school. Is that moving and is that impl being implemented this um, semester or the next? Yeah, so it's it's progressing. Uh, the I'm, 
had recent emails uh, as of last week with the uh, principal of the high school. So we came up with what the estimated cost would be. Um, so now we're looking to see how that funding will come to be. So it's it's a school program, a class where the kids will get credit. So I've asked the principal to seek funds to the school system um, and we'll see where that goes. Um, if for some reason the budget's tight and they can't find the money, then we'll progress in another avenue and try to find find the money. But I know that they're putting it into their course of studies where kids can select the class for next year. I don't know exactly when they do that, uh, but things are still progressing in a positive manner. Excellent, thank you. Any other questions? I don't have a question, but John, I, I do like that I the, the little, I guess, slide, because most of the times when you do talk, I find myself scrolling through Facebook or Instagram to find pictures because you constantly refer to it. I'm like, okay, I got to look up the gingerbread houses, but no. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no, I, I, I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, when we're, we're doing it this way, which I know we, for the most part, enjoy because we can do it from different avenues, whether we're at home yeah. or at work or wherever we are or in a car. Um, yeah. You know, it's nice <laughs> that we can connect. But yeah, giving a report, um, you can see the smiling faces. And I ask any of you that aren't uh, following us on Facebook or Instagram um, to do so. It, they're, we're pretty easy to find. But again, it just kind of highlights some of the things that we did through the month. So as I'm talking, you can see some of the images yeah. from you know what I'm talking about. Thanks, Brendan. No, that's what I normally do, but now I like I didn't need to do it today because we had it I had it right in front of me. Well, yeah. I will try to keep up with it. Uh, <laughs> try to keep up with it. Thank you. No, and then of course I love hearing about the rec basketball. Right, I gotta ask Jack about the draft. Was there any drama there? <laughs> But no, thanks for the report. <laughs> and yeah, congratulations on 20 years. Yeah, thank and you. Sandra, you, you too, five. That's awesome. All righty. Um, thanks again. So we're going to move right into um, Mark's report on the HYC Center staff report. Mark. Thanks, Renee. Uh, I did not do up a slideshow. Uh, my apologies. I'm going to try and get better and get one going here for February. Um, but I'll talk through it uh, pretty quick as I usually do. Administratively, we're starting to work with the our top three user groups uh, for the ICE in building their schedules for their next season. Um, we thought it would be well. We thought it'd be advantageous to get on it on it earlier than we ever have. Hopefully, they can have all their all their schedules set in stone by the time they finish their seasons up this year. Um, so we're starting that process now and looking to kind of get that behind us, hopefully by, by beginning to middle of February. Um, I mentioned last time about a new uh, billboard style sign that we were working on. It has been finished and we're just waiting on some new posts um, to install it on the rotary side of the HYCC versus the Stephen street side. Um, so hopefully by our next meeting, we'll have that up and, uh, and going, that'll be an awesome thing. The one we have now is kind of dilapidated, falling apart. Uh, and it's kind of, kind of difficult to get out there and, and to where it is to up and down with different things. So hopefully moving it over and attracting more, more people to seeing the sign at that rotary will be a great thing for all. Um, Ice news, our hockey season's in full swing. We have two to four games per week with all the schools playing, whether they're JV games, varsity games, um, so on and so forth. But that's going great right now. Um, our next, we just this past weekend, Pope John Paul had a military appreciation night. I know Barnstable is going to be having one at the end of this month. Um, so all the schools are doing some different things and we're, accommodating for it well with ticket takers and everything we have to do on our end. Um, but hockey season's in full swing and that's going great. Um, we have a new tournament coming up this, this upcoming weekend, uh, the Swagger Cup. Uh, that's Cape Cod Hockey Tournament. Uh, hockey tournaments, they'll be at the HYCC with Bantam, Squirts, and Pee Wee Divisions. Um, there's over 25 teams competing this weekend. That tournament will start Saturday and work through Monday. Uh, on the holiday. We also got news this past week that the U.S. Coast Guard Commandant's Cup 
We'll be back at the HYCC in April. That'll be April 25th, 26th, and 27th. Uh, for those who don't know, it's a group of about 10 to 12 teams from Coast Guard stations up along the East Coast uh, from Florida all the way through Maine. Uh, so that's going to be an excellent event. Again, they'll be back. I believe this will be, I believe, their 12th time at the HYCC. Um, so that's that's great news. It's always a great event and um, kind of brings us a little life into the rink there at the end of April uh, when it's kind of tapering off. And the gym side, basketball is going great again. Sturgis East and West and their basketball programs are in full swing. We'll probably get three, three to four games a week in the gym between them and their practices. Um, it's always a great atmosphere. We're looking forward to their big uh, East-West matchup. They do a great, uh, like a coaches for cancer type night, and then it's uh, pretty packed. That's the end of this month as well. That'll be a, a pretty slamming night for the gym. Um, our public gym times during the weekends uh, have been kind of upticking. We've put on some extra staff to handle um, the uptick in numbers on that, as well as the uptick in numbers on the other end. Uh, the building just gets to see so much action on the weekends that we just needed some more staff to keep an eye on, on some of the kids up in that end of the building and, and basically everything that goes on. Um, but Steve Headley wanted me to let everybody know that the numbers are going up and that's a good thing that we're seeing a lot more kids kind of taking a safe haven and a safe place at the HYCC on the weekends. Um, Barnstable Youth Basketball. Thursday evenings, they have seven and nine. Uh, that's kind of a standing thing for them. Uh, and, and again, a great, another agency out in the town that's using our facility. Um, and they'll be back in March with one of their local tournaments as well. Um, so it's another good thing. Programming wise, our SOAR program, full swing again, we're in the middle of our second session for that. Uh, over 45 kids per, are signed up. We see you know, maybe not all of them per day, but quite a few. And they're uh, taking in activities, whether it's skating, uh, broom ball, different activities in the gym or on the ice every day and really keeping those kids engaged. Um, that's an awesome thing. Um, our indoor pickleball second session is going great. Uh, we have over 30 participants uh, every Monday and Wednesday for either a beginner, a beginner's course or a competitive course. They're in, the, they're in the gym 9 to 11 every Monday and Wednesday. And, um, again, that's another program we offer that's going great. And um, that's 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 about it. Been pretty uh, swamped. We do have a staff member leaving us this in about a week, uh, our rink program supervisor. So we'll be, we'll be looking to replace that position and uh, hopefully, hopefully sooner than later. But um, – We'll see how that whole process goes, but that's kind of why I'm a little behind. Uh, we're just uh, anticipating that, and in the middle of hockey season, it's kind of a tough time for that to happen. But that's where I'm at. Any questions, feel free. I'm available. Well, Mark, how is our uh, new concession stand um, vendor doing, and any update on that? Uh, Dean's loving it. I think, uh, he's, he's quite pleased with the amount of traction that's in and out of the building on the, on the weekends and during the week. Uh, he seems very happy. Um, he likes the addition of a few tournaments that we've, uh, added to the slates that really helps him out. And that helps us out. Uh, and he's been like very well recepted by the community. I think it took a little bit of time for people to see, see something there all the time again. Um, but he's doing, he's doing well. And I think he likes it and uh, he'll be done the end of March. And then I believe the process will go back out and hopefully with a new RFP and fingers crossed, we'll see what happens, but I, I know he'll be interested in, in kind of coming back. Good, thank you. Any thank other you. questions? All right. Thank you, Mark. Um, moving right into a on the Sandy Mac up, um, board update. So very similar to our commission, the Sandy Neck board um, voted in their 2024 chair and vice chair. So that will be Tom um, O'Neill and Pete 
Sam Ho will be the vice chair. Um, I find this board quite um, interesting. It's a, a, a brand new world for me. Um, we have right in our community, one of the most um, interesting environmental projects going on. So there is a great deal of effort in offsetting the erosion of the um, Sandy Net waterfront. And there are several um, grants that are in play to help our community support that effort. And if there are any questions in terms of erosion, I think Sandy Neck and what's going on there and the tangible data um, speaks for itself. It is it is real and it and it's happening quite um, aggressively. On top of that, I was not um, with how many endangered um, species are um, being tracked and monitored um, on Sandy Neck. And every year, the Sandy Neck team has to um, present, a, it's called a CAMCOM report. And it has excruciating detail in terms of what is happening to the many endangered um, that are on sandy piping clover. And with that community of endangered species comes the balance of how do you allow the, the people that utilize the facility to not invade the endangered species. Did not have a way vehicle patrons because of that balance of the endangered species. So what I have found to be most interesting is that there's an opportunity for us not only to understand this in more detail, um, but to also connect our youth commissioners into an area that many young people are interested in and active. So there are some opportunities for the youth commissioners to work in conjunction with a few of these environmental projects at Sandy Neck. And the final thing that I'd like to report on, and Mark, that's the reason I asked about the concession stand, is that they also have a challenge of keeping a vendor there um, and that they'd like to kind of team with us a little bit to see what are we learning to find the vendor and keep the vendor and how that is so important in keeping the people that use our facilities um, happy with a concession stand. So we have similar um, pain um, um, gaps in terms of service and maybe we just have to go about it somewhat differently to keep that vendor in place. So with that being said, are there any questions on Sandy Neck? I'm hoping that when the weather um, improves that we as a recreation commission can take a, a little trip there to see firsthand some of the facilities that they offer. Because as I said earlier, it's, it's pretty new to me, but it's a pretty exciting area. And the, the, our community at the HYCC is mostly um, the local community. Their community is worldwide. So those folks that um, visit Sandy Neck are coming from all over the world. It's quite interesting. Any questions? Renee, have they, I mean, I know it might be a scheduling nightmare, but if you can't get one vendor, there's so many food trucks out there these days. Have they thought about looking into different vendors? So I do think that that is, um, I think that those kind of discussions are the discussions we have to have. I know that the um, Calmus Beach, John, did that have a, um, a vendor this summer? Yeah, we had Dean, who's 
from the little sandwich shop that's here at the HYCC now. Okay, the, town, so the, the town does the Board of Health and other places ha have a list of approved food trucks, you know, in town that can service, you know, it's just a question of whether they can serve at particular locations. You know, like Sandy Neck is huge. You know, we do, recreation doesn't manage Sandy Neck. Um, it's you know, separate I mean, organization. It's separate, but the, you know, their their big thing is off roading and those sort of things where people bring their own food. You know, where the beach per se, you know, is called Sandy Neck, but it's filled with rocks. You know, so it's really not necessarily. I mean, it's a well populated, but a lot of people go off road. So to keep a food vendor there is more challenging than someone that would go to like a uh, Craigville or Calmus or something like that. But uh, I'm sure their staff has worked on it, but the, but there are food trucks that are available in case they can't find someone. There's There yeah. are other alternatives. And I also think that was quite interesting, at least with the vendor at Calmus um, before Dean took that spot, it became a destination restaurant, if you know what I mean. It didn't just serve the people that were at the beach. The food was so good, um, people were able to come in and not park for the beach, but to go to the restaurant. And it was quite popular. So I do think, Sharon and uh, Recreation Commissioners, that there are some new ways to look at this option that might benefit both Sandy Neck and us. But um, that is good news that Dean, I didn't know that he had taken over at the Calamus Beach. All righty. So um, any other questions on moving to new February meeting and the March meeting? So, um, John, do you want to just share with the the group the three that I sent to you yeah I don't have exactly in front of me but um uh, you told me about a youth athletic foundation um, that provides um resources to families to participate in it seemed like it could be high school sports recreational sports private travel type sports um so uh we would reach out to them to see if they want to come to next meeting. That'd be great, uh, especially with our programming coming up for spring and some other things going on. It would be great addition to have them. Um, then you also mentioned for March is to have the home show uh, come because they'll be utilizing, I believe, renting the HYCC for Mark. Um, and they could talk about um, that partnership and relationship there. Um, so then. Are the other one was Tim's. What is your? You, tell us a little bit about your programs and having them as a potential guest. Um. So there's a there's a company called or an organization called Con for Kids. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. Um. But they come to me. Well, a parent will come to me during the during the basketball season or flag football season and ask if um you know, for some information for con for kids. And what they'll do is they'll assist and, you know, I have seen them pay, you know, 100% of a kid's season fee or, or, or a portion of it. And I think that the requirement is that the kids have to be on school lunch, um, you know, like the free lunch program. So don't, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the only requirement. Um, but it seems to work out pretty good when you run up against people who are, you know, struggling to to pay for their kid to play a sport. Um, these guys have come through uh, a few times over the years, certainly. So they, yeah, they might be a good one to bring on in just to kind of uh, get familiarized with. Thank you, Tim. Any other ideas for groups? That, I think, Tony, you might have had another group or I don't know if it was you or Jim that sent some information to John. Any possible presenters? Okay, so we, why don't we work with those um, three organizations for February and for March. And what I will say to um, recreation commissioners, if you I hear about an organization that is youth-focused, youth recreation-focused, 
um, something that you know might be new um, outside the outside the box we're already doing. Let's bring those up and um, get that um, communicated to not only ourselves but to the community at large. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, are there any public comments or things that were not before our meeting that we need to to talk about? Renee, I don't see anyone here for public comment. John, I I did ask you that one question about the use of the soccer park for um training the school buses did anything come of that uh no not as of yet but i definitely am looking into it okay so we we just have another item that um we i just act i just stumbled across going to one of our recreational facilities and it's currently being used as a um training location for our school buses and there were some um, nearby residents that were were not too happy, but we'll follow up on that and give a report if we need to next month. So I will um, ask if there's a motion to close our meeting and get ready for our next meeting, which will be in February, February the 5th, I believe. Renee, um, I arrived a little bit late, to the meeting, but was there any discussion around the Osterville playground park and the demo demolition that's taking place? So I will pass that to John. Um, no, there was no discussion on the playground. Usually when I do my reports, it's kind of backtracking, but uh, I mean, there was an article in today's Cape Cod Times, and I believe I mentioned in other meetings, I believe I have, but uh, the Osterville community building is being demolished. Uh, they put fencing around the building. Uh, it is coming down. It's uh, well past its life. Um, who knows exactly what will will go in place there? There's potential of a new building if if the community so desires, uh, depending on funding. Uh, there's uh, you know plans for uh, and to get together with the committee for the playground, which. Um, there's definitely support and funding for that, um, but there's also uh, talks of a restroom area out there for all the things going on, so people would have a place to go to the bathroom, and then potentially a basketball court, street hockey court for, for the kids in that area. So it's kind of a revitalization of that area uh, since the Osterville Bay School was torn down uh, a number of years ago. And now some things are popping back up in their place. Uh, but we, we are meeting in uh, January 18th, I believe is the date for the committee for the playground. So uh, when we meet next month, I'll definitely have a lot more to share with that. And I can give as best as I can updates on the building that's coordinated from uh, the Department of Public Works. But I'll try to get updates to keep people aware of kind of where they're at and the status of things. But they're starting a best disabatement uh, very shortly, and we'll continue on the process. But from from discussions and reading the paper, it's about a two two and a half month process. That, is the reason it takes two months is because of the asbestos? I, I think uh, I, again, it's not my world, um, so yeah. I don't know exactly why it takes so long. But yeah, I mean, they have to do um, the abatement, and I don't know how long that takes. But you know, there's a process to it, and driving by the Marston's Mill School that was recently torn down. I mean, it was quite the process for, for that large of a building. So even though it's not a huge building per se, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of details they have to uh, go through to properly um, demolish it. But uh, I'll try to give updates as best as I can when I have them. Thank you very much. No problem. So my question, John, is that something that we should have on our agenda as a a monthly update or update as needed? Uh, update as needed, and I can try to do it in my, you know, my my updates. I don't think it needs its own special uh, category. Okay. All righty, so I will ask for a motion to close our meeting. I will motion. 
And, a and I will second. Bunny right, Burke will in, second. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. All righty. Aye.